Alright, how's it going everybody? This has been a video I've been kind of want to make for a good bit now. But never really knew how about I'd go about it because this type of thing, just overall explanation, I've never really been good at it. But I'm going to go ahead and try this anyway. This is going to be basically a how-to guide on how to get into slash starting broadcasting races on iRacing. If you're like me, you may be... I don't know, uh, on NR2003 or something, just did like an offline league thing and kind of streamed it, you know, kind of commentated over it. This is the step up, basically. And, I'm like I said, I'm going to try to explain how this works. Now, a disclaimer I want to make here. First of all, I'm garbage at explaining things. Second, I will not be going into on how to use SDK or ATVO. Mainly because I have no freaking clue how to use ATVO, and I no longer use SDK. I'm going to be strictly using sim racing apps here, just to show how to get just the most basic type of overlay working for you. Now, on to part one of this whole thing. First and foremost, you need to have a... a Stable would be preferred, but I, I have a freaking potato. A stable internet connection with at least about 10 megabytes of upload speed. That's upload, okay? This is the live streaming and everything. If you've been streaming before, you already know this, but live streaming and broadcasting is the only time your upload speed will matter more than download speed. So, once again, uh, recommended from my experience would be at least 10. As you can see, my download speed, okay, I have a freaking potato. So, I'm going to let this go here. Just a standard speed test. If anyone's in the North Alabama area, what's up? How you doing? As you can see, my upload speed, it's, uh, it's quite a bit better than my download speed. Now, most of the time, this will never happen. Usually your download speed will always be higher than your upload speed. But once again, when you live in the middle of nowhere, some really, really interesting crap happens on the daily. But yes, I have 16 megabytes of upload. Ideally, you want this to be 10 or higher. Now, that is part or step one of things that you really, really need. Part two of that would be sim racing apps. I already have sim racing apps installed. So I'm not going to actually download, but it is literally as simple as you download this, let it download and whatever, and then you run it. Because this right here, Sim Racing App Server, that's really what that is there. You just run it. I have it pinned in my toolbar because I use it often because technically I have to. So you'll run that, and then you'll get, I'm just going to boot up, you'll get this thing, and along with another pop-up that I think just came up on my second monitor. But let this do its thing, and you'll see you'll get a link right here. And you have the second thing. You also get this thing. Uh, we don't care about that. I don't care about that. As everything just completely fell apart on OBS. There we go. Yeah, we. I don't really care about that. But, so you get Sim Racing apps. I'm going to close out that because I'll go over what you do with all that in part two here. So I'm going to exit off that. So you get Sim Racing apps. Second, you can use either... Streamlabs OBS, which is what I use. Excuse me, Streamlabs OBS or regular OBS. I use Streamlabs for actually streaming and broadcasting because there's a bit more things you can do with it. But for right now, I'm using actually just regular OBS to record this video. So, yeah. So, get, get OBS, or if you have a personal streaming software you already use, I'm sure it'll be fine. I just use Streamlabs. Uh, third, I highly, highly recommend it because I have no idea how in the hell you would do all this with a single monitor, but you really, really need a, a second monitor. I have two monitors, and honestly, I would love to have a third for this, for this type of thing. If you have a single monitor, if you can find a way to juggle all of this, Friggin' kudos. Because I have no idea how in the world I'd even attempt to. I'm almost overwhelmed with, just, with still having two monitors. But if you can, get a second monitor. If you already have like a three monitor or 
like duo or triple monitor setup, congratulations, this should be fairly easy. But yes, that is the required things you'll need. All right, this is going to be part two, basically just getting everything set up and implementing everything. So right now on iRacing, I have a replay loaded up and it's actually on my second monitor. So you can see that little window there. So iRacing is up on my second monitor. So what we're going to do, we're going to boot up Sim Racing Apps, that server thing. You go ahead and launch it. And it'll bring up this window again. Give it a second. And there it goes. It's loaded up, and I get this little window here that I still don't care about. So what we're going to do, this link here, gives you an HTTP colon, full colon, whatever, uh, slashes 192, whatever. You get that's your IP that you're connected to on some racing apps. You take that, and you're going to type that in in the address bar. As you can see, already pretty much has it set up. So you're going to go to that, and it's going to bring you up to a, a new menu. I have a new update because I actually haven't installed the latest version of Sim Racing apps, so things might be different. They usually add a bunch of new features, but what we're going to do is I'm going to scroll down, and there's a couple things I'm going to want. I'm going to want Camera Selector 30. This is what you'll use, or you may have hotkeys set up on your keyboard, but this is what I personally use to go through all the cameras and you know to click on all the drivers and everything. I'm going to minimize that for now. I'm going to continue scrolling down. Get a car telemetry reference. This is what I use as basically kind of a if there's someone out on track that I want to be highlighted it for let you know what who the camera's currently focused on. This is what I use for that. So I'll minimize that. I'll scroll down again until we get to right, right here. So Sim Racing Apps comes with two different types of uh, tickers. You get horizontal one, kind of like uh, the old Fox layout, or you can get a vertical one. I personally use uh, the vertical. So you get the standings banner class vertical 20. If you want short names, like uh, for me, instead of my full name on here being Trent Sneed, for the short name it would be T Sneed. So click the thumbnail, whichever one you want. And I'll bring up, once again, a little box here. So what you're going to do, you can do this in any order you want with the ones we already got here. Except this, you don't do what we're about to do on the camera selection. We don't do that. But for the car telemetry one, and the standings slash kind of overlay here. That's, that's what you do it on. So you get this link. You're going to copy it. So now what we're going to do. Is we're going to get up. Whatever our uh, streaming software is. I Once again I use stream, or Streamlabs OBS. Now what I'm going to do. I already have a bunch of a scenes. Freaking bow. <laughs> <laughs> Bo is one of our colleagues and I gave him the login information because he's uh, one of the streamers for Wild Horse <laughs> and that's what he named his personal thing alright thank you Bo very cool <laughs> so we're going to add a new scene I'm just going to call it I'm hitting the wrong freaking thing I'm going to call it that, and I'm going to spell tutorial because I can't spell. There we go. So, so we got this now. So what we're going to do, I'm going to add a source, and I believe I use Game Capture. Yeah, Game Capture. So add source, uh, add new source instead. I'm gonna, you can call it whatever the hell you want. Just make sure you can get to it. Uh iRacing meme. Why not? So add source. Capture specific window. And you can already see it has iRacing already uh, selected here. I personally will turn off capture cursor 
That's fine. So all of that is fine. So we're going to hit done. And now what you're going to do, you're going to drag it to where it fits the window. And as you can see, it doesn't fit correctly. Fix that. Boom. Now it's, it's stretched, but it fixed correctly. So that's our iRacing.meme. So next is we'll get another source. This time is going to be a browser source. Add source. I'll call it ticker meme. This is when you get this here. Now, it should still be copied from earlier, but just be safe. Going to copy this link again. And we're going to paste it into this. There we go. Now, problem two, it's fairly obvious. There's gray everywhere. We don't want gray. So what we're going to do, going to hit filters. Hit that plus sign. Filter type should be color key. You, don't, you can name it whatever. Hit done. Key color type is going to be custom color. And key color, we're going to pick the screen color, which will bring up that square, and then you'll click anywhere in this gray. Once you do that, you hit done, and boom, the gray is now gone. So now what you can do as well is with these little uh, movement boxes, you can go ahead and hit Alt, then click the, the little box there, and then you can just kind of crop it to be similar to that. So you kind of outline here. There we go. So now you just drag it. I'll put it in the top left corner. You can put it wherever if you want to be. If you want to be kinky, you can like put it over here. If you're weird, you can do that. You can go ahead and put it up there. I'm just going to enlarge it. And boom. There you go. There's a ticker. Baby's first ticker. So now you have a, you got simracingapps.com there. Now, I'm sure there's an easier way to do what I'm about to do, but let's say you uh, you got someone who wants to be broadcasted, and you get their logo. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to open up your file explorer, and I'm going to just use Wild Horse's logo. You're going to get that. You're going to drag it into the little sources area, and now you have a, a nice logo here. But wait, it covers up half the freaking screen. You grab here, and it's going to do that. It's going to be kind of square. It's not going to work. So this is not going to be the most aesthetically pleasing thing on the universe. Once again, this is the most basic tutorial that, I, that we can do. What you're going to do, you're going to line it up like so. You're going to hit shift, left shift, click and drag till it lines up. And you can already see what's about to happen and you're probably going to uh, kind of cringe a little bit. There we go. Line it up and boom. The logo. Oh, hold on, it's a little too tall here. There we go. There we go. Boom. It's not the prettiest thing, but it gets the job done. That's what we've been doing. Technically, we use a different ticker, but for about five or six months, this is what me and Andrew did. This is how we rolled. And it works. It gets the job done. And that's what this tutorial is about. It's just getting the job done. All right. So. Next, so you have your ticker, baby's first ticker. Congratulations, I'm so proud. I'm going to close out of this. My file explorers, I don't need that anymore. So we can also egg, kind of exit out the standings tab. Now we're going to get the card telemetry tab. Make sure you still have all this crap open, because there, there is definitely a use for it. Copy that link. Minimize it. Going to add a new source. It's going to be another browser source. Going to name it uh, Driver Me. Paste it in. Boom. All right. Now, once again, there's kind of gray here. Now, we can do what we did last time with this, you know, with the color key. But there is a but in this. Sim Racing apps will not display the throttle and brake inputs on a driver that is not yourself. So, and since you're not driving when you're broadcasting, usually, that's, you know, kind of an issue. That's gonna ruin the immersion. It's gonna show the mile an hour and the RPM, but that's about it. I think it will, actually. I might wanna make sure real quick. So, 
This is where the camera selector comes in handy. Instead of me going into iRacing and doing something, I can just get this app. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose the Ghost Man, Travis. There we go. Yep. Okay, so it will show the miles an hour, but that's about it. So what we're going to do, since this part here technically is not really needed for what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit Alt and just kind of crop it out. Oh, there we go. Crop it out. And there we go. So now the camera, whoever I've selected, is name, just their name will pop up here. So I usually like putting it in the top right. It's a bit big. So just kind of, you know, shrink it up a little bit to size, and there we go. Once again, you do that by preference. And now, every whoever you click on, I can exit out this now, everyone you click on, when see whoever the camera's focused on, goes to them. Click on myself. Mmm. Pontiac power, baby. But well, yeah. And in a nutshell, that is your first overlay complete. Now, you can continue to go through sim racing apps and, you know, find more things you want. For example, uh, there's a track map down here somewhere. Uh, where is it? Right here, you got a bunch of track maps. Uh, we can just kind of, you know, get... Reference car. Reference car is where the camera's pointed on, which is me at this point. Uh, no background. There we go, and it has now it has everybody. So you know you can do that. the The background it'll still be gray. You have to use that color key again to get the gray out. But yeah, there, there's all sorts of stuff you can use. But once again, in a nutshell, that is pretty much it for the first overlay. Now we'll move into part three, which is getting everything more or less set up in OBS to actually stream. Alrighty, welcome to, I think this is part three, I don't remember. My attention span's short. So now we're going to go into the settings of OBS, and this is where it's going to be, I believe, on preference, usually. Uh, oh, this right here, the output settings here. Uh, specifically, stopping streams, this is useful for me because, once again, I have the attention span and the memory of a goldfish. The show confirmation dialog when stopping streams. What this is, is this This is very helpful for the league, one of the leagues we broadcast on Wednesday night, Kings of Sling. They have an outro they like to be, that they want to be played, Rise the Stream Ends. And in the heat of the moment, I will usually sign off and then go down here. This will say end stream when you're about to end stream, right? I'll click it, then the stream ends, and then right as I do it, I go, oh god, I forgot the freaking outro again. This right here, the show confirmation dialog, I'll hit end stream, and it'll bring up a window that says, are you sure you want to end the stream? And that right there has saved me so many times. To go, oh, right, I have to play the outro. Play the outro, and then hit confirm, and then the stream will end. So this, specifically, is very useful for me. Now, the automatically start replay buffer when streaming, I have no idea what in the cinnamon toast hell any of that is, so I'm going to continue going down. Source alignment snapping, that's on. I don't know what it does, but I'm going to keep it on. There's, there's, I think there's probably a bunch of videos out there that actually explain to what all this stuff does. But I don't know anything about it, and I haven't watched it, so, you know. Output. Uh, streaming. Okay. So this I know for a fact. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, I have a GTX 10 ATI. Uh, use either NVENC or NVNC new. What did I even have on? Okay, I had new. Uh, rate control. That's been on CBR since I started. Uh, Bitrate. This right here. This is going to make... Or break you this is this right here is it's what your upload speed is going to try and stream the quality of your stream in for example if it's set to 1000 or lower your stream is going to look like a PlayStation 1 game 2000 to about 20 2000 about 2500 is about PS2 quality 3,000 is probably, for 720p, it looks alright. 
Now, you might be thinking, well, Trent, you have like 16 megabytes of upload. You could turn this up a fair bit, which is true. I could. But here's the problem. You see how my download speed is low now, okay, at night? That download speed drops like a, it drops like a tank, okay? The upload speed does the same. It'll go from about 16 megabytes to hovering right on 10. And 3,000 is pretty much the safe spot for me. Ideally, you'd want about 4,000. So if you have a really stable internet connection of like 12, 13 megabytes of upload and it stays there constantly, you could probably up this up to 35 or 4,000. But 3,000 is a safe spot for me. Uh, preset performance. I think this is for CPU things. If you have a higher end CPU, you could probably go up to quality. But my CPU is kind of old. It's a i7 5820K, so I have that set to performance profile. I uh, have that set to high. What else I got here? I have no idea what that is. I have no idea what any of this is. So we're going to go to recording. Now, this is mainly for. If you're just going to be streaming, you don't have to worry about this. I always record a backup if, of my streams, just in case um, if my internet gets too horrible during broadcasting, I'll have a backup I can upload. Thankfully, I don't have to do that often, but it is something I've had to do. And let's see, recording that, CBR. Now the bitrate. The bitrate is set to 40,000. Now you might be thinking to yourself, holy Christ, that's like a lot. Bitrate quality, you don't really have to worry about a really, really high number on recording because it doesn't take internet. So set that thing about what your computer's probably comfortable with. I ripped this number straight off GeForce Experience. Oh, thank you, phone. Very cool. I forgot to mute you. But 40,000 is fine for a recording. But once again, you have to edit that to about your computer specs. Uh, yeah, that looks fine. Once again, I don't know what any of this crap is. Uh, audio. I like setting it to 320 because that's the max. I like fairly decent audio. I don't know what re I don't know what this is. It's enabled for 20 seconds, so that's there. Now we go to the audio, 48 hertz, kilohertz. That's max. I like once again. I'm a fan of higher audio quality. If you want to be kinky and record your thing in mono, ooh, I could set that to high. Ooh, surround sound. Ooh, I might do that. But for now, I'm gonna keep it on stereo. Um, video settings, 2560 by 1440, that is my base resolution, although I should probably turn that down to 1080, because I switched iRacing back to my 1080p monitor, for, so it's not as intensive on my hardware, and the output scaled resolution. What this is, this is what your video, let's see from the video tab, this is what your video resolution is going to be. I record in 1080p. 60 FPS. The FPS also counts for your stream for whatever reason. Uh, one thing I do want to mention here, I probably need, or was it? Oh God, I might have been running away from the TV this whole time. Okay, I may have overlooked it. Real good possibility of that happening. But, the video, the resolution, this may also count for streaming. I may have overlooked that before. Okay. Hotkeys, I don't have any of that set up. Advanced. Okay, so this is what we're going to need to go to for advanced. Now, if your internet is really, really unstable, and I had to use this whenever I did use SDK, it made the bitrate jump like insanely from like a thousand kilobytes per second or whatever to like three thousand. That right there, if it try to figure out how to explain this, because once again, I'm sorry, I'm horrible explaining things. Go back to output. This right here. The stream will always try and run at 3000. And without dynamic bitrate turned on, if this goes underneath, if your bitrate goes to underneath 3000, your stream will start chopping. Almost like it goes from 60 FPS to like 5. 
until it goes back, until your connection is able to continue producing 3,000 bit rate. Now the fix to that is, oh, I gotta scroll back now, dynamically change bit rate when dropping frames while streaming. So if, once again, if your internet tanks and you can no longer have 3,000 kilobytes of a bit rate or whatever, once that drops, your frames will drop, which means it will become very choppy, not going to be pleasant to look at. If you turn this on, your bit rate will change. Instead of being set to 3,000, it will, it will go to whatever your internet can handle. So one minute, it can be at 3,000, and then let's say your internet goes out a little bit, it'll drop to 2,000, and then back to 1,000, and it'll be fine. Instead of it becoming choppy, just the visual quality will change to that of like a PlayStation 1 game. Now, in theory, I would still have this turned on if there wasn't a big downside. If your internet is very stable, which once I stopped using SDK, it became stable. If you continue to have this, your bit rate is going to soar. This is, rare. This is like a weird bug that many people have. With this enabled, your bit rate will soar to higher than what it needs to be and then tank, and then your stream will lose connection. I've actually had OBS crash while broadcasting three times because I had this enabled whenever it did not really need to be. So I keep that off. And now that's about it. I think that's honestly all... Yeah, I have that turned on. Yeah, this is all by preference. But yes, appearance. This is yeah. This is all. If you're if you're weird, you can set this to. Oh, oh my God. Oh Jesus Christ! I just flash banged everyone who just watched this. I apologize. I'm gonna keep that tonight. Remote control. I did that. Did that, that. But yeah, that is about it in terms of how I have everything set up. I understand if it's not the best explanation. I'm not really good at explaining all this. Once again, there's probably a good 30 videos on YouTube that tells you what all of this does. But if you want to use whatever settings I have, if you have a better computer than me, which is possible, then you can take these settings and run with it pretty much. If you have AMD graphics cards, you may get something different. I don't know what it would be because, once again, I have NVIDIA. But yes, that will pretty much be it in terms of Part 3. Alright, so this is going to be Part 4, I think. And this is going to be actually streaming and monitoring what is happening. So once again, how this is going to work. Uh, right now I have everything muted. Now usually, I'm actually going to go live here and we're going to... I can only imagine the looks on people's faces when they see this. Um, but how this is going to work right now, you're going to go over here. If you have more sources and everything set up, you'll, you'll need to take note of this. Right now, it detects the browser sources as possible audio sources. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mute that and I'm going to mute that because, well, if I don't think it's going to produce any sounds, but if it does, I do not want the, the freaking ticker and the, the driver info, you know, producing sounds. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide both of these. The only three things that I, or I say three, because I'll have my headphones and my mic set up here. Right now they're both muted because, well, I'm going to go through. But every stream I do, this is going to be on, up to preference because not everyone's going to do this. I always play the national anthem before I start commentating everything. That's something I like doing. If, if you don't want to do that, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to, but that's something I like to do. And I'll have it set up here. But now what we're going to do is going to quickly go over, I mean, kind of the sound mixing settings. So this is going to be, you're going to have to do it by, I guess, eyeball and by what the uh, comments will say. The way I have it, I am a loud person. I am, I, I like to scream. And I very much implement that into my broadcasting style. But I have the mic turned up to max, which is probably a horrible idea. I make the people turn down the volume, and I'll have uh, my headphones set to about, 
it depends. Dirt racing is always louder than asphalt racing for whatever reason, so I have dirt set to here, and I'll have asphalt set to here, right about the yellow. Once again, you're going to have to do this by eyeball and by what the people say. So for now, I'm going to have that set to yellow. And now, we're going to talk about going live. So you're going to need to link... Um, you're going to need to link your channel... And I just realized this is going to be, once again, by whatever service you use. So, I'm probably going to have to close real quick Facebook page. Going to have that set to our, our Wild Horse Facebook page. So, we'll probably have to go into stream. And this is already logged in, connected. So, okay. I think it's YouTube that has a stream key. Hmm. Okay. So very quickly before I do this, I'm going to bring the OBS I'm using to record all this with. So we're going to go into settings in here because it's about the same process, I believe. So I think it's stream. Yes. Okay. So service. Uh, let's say you use YouTube. Oh, we could also do Facebook Live. Let's say you're going to do to YouTube. You go to here. Uh, primary ingest server and you'll get a stream key from your channel. It's going to be in your stream settings. I don't remember how to do it because I don't use YouTube to broadcast anymore. There, Once again, there's plenty of videos on how to get your stream key. You're going to get your stream key. You'll put it in here. You'll hit apply and OK or whatever. So I'm going to move that back over here now. So once you get your stream key set up, if you log, I think with the Streamlabs, you automatically log in to your account. It'll be automatically set up where you don't have to do a stream key, which is I, I'm a big fan of. So all that's already set up. So what you'll do now is you're going to get ready to go. You're going to get ready to broadcast. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to go live. Hit the go live button. And this is what I'm going to do. Uh, you get a name. Uh, mean boom perfect so now this is where it's gonna get funny I always start off the stream with everything muted make sure things looks fine yep schedule we're not doing that it's gonna be not racing and now we're gonna confirm and go live it's gonna do that starting video transmission there we go it's live I'm currently live and you see the bit rate Right now it's kind of tanking a bit, and you see it dropped frames. But it's kind of it kind of fixed itself. It'll do that. You'll probably drop frames in the beginning, but now it's hovering right at 3,000 kilobytes per second, and it has not dropped any more frames. So now I have zero viewers. I pray to God it stays like that because I really don't want them to see this. So now what we're gonna do? This is when I'd have like a picture of Dale Earnhardt as a background, and I'd start playing the national anthem, and then I would hit record. All right, I ran out of storage. Never mind. So I'm not going to record a backup, but do this where I record. So now the Star Spangled Banner is over and everything. So now I'd unmute the desktop first, and then the mic. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. Yeah, no, Andrew. What I'm doing, I'm making a tutorial for people who want to get into broadcasting. I'm about to upload when I'm done. I'm going to upload this to my channel and probably on this as well. This will all make sense here in a bit. This will only be like for a lap or two. But once again, so now everything's unmuted and the audience can hear you. So now you bring up uh, the Sim Racing Apps camera thing from earlier. And usually I'd have this on my opposite monitor. I just, actually, no, I actually have it here because I have the, Oh my God, it disappeared again. Mother of God. I hate when that happens. There we go. So now a uh, green flag is going to the air. I'll hit play. And iRacing appears to be frozen. There we go. So you now you got everything going. And let's say uh, you want to go to uh, the 87 car. Boom. Click that. Goes to him. He'll go on board with him. Boom. Hit the nose. And you just do that whilst commentating the race. Pause now. As we have four people, or we had four people watching. I apologize for anyone that's confused out of their minds. 
This is something I promised people I would do, and this is how you do it. So you keep on going about that until you're done, and then let's say the race is over. Uh, say session, boom, race is over. Check your flag, boom. I won. As, oh no. Everything just froze on me again. Or minimize, there we go. So you, you sign off or whatever. Then if you have an outro, you don't forget the outro. Boom. Are you sure you want to stop streaming? Oh god, I forgot the outro. Hit the outro. The outro plays. You deafen. Then, yes, end stream. And the stream is done. There you go. It's over. So, yeah. That is basically, in a nutshell, how you broadcast iRacing. There is one last part that I will go into where it's more opinion-based. I still have this up because this is very much on top of broadcasting. I guess you'd say how how would you land a, I guess a, a a gig in broadcasting? I I guess the simplest way to do it would maybe go on the forums on iRacing or go on Facebook and just like in an iRacing group to say, Hey, I am looking into broadcasting. Is there anyone that is looking for a broadcaster and wants to take a, a, a chance on a new guy? I say that be maybe how you go into it because that is not even remotely how me and Andrew got into broadcasting. I got into this as a joke. The league I race in, Wild Horse Racing, we had, for a long time, we had, we'd have broadcasters come and go because half the time they would never even show up. They would leave it without giving a reason, and it got, it, it frustrated me a lot because it's like, I, I went with the mindset of doing this. How hard can it be to sit in this chair and just commentate people going around a racetrack? So, in our Rookie Series, I uploaded this on YouTube when we originally started this on YouTube, of the Rookie Series. I uploaded, uh, I streamed that. Apparently, one of the drivers there who raced with us, he apparently liked it. This is uh, Jay Gidding from Thunder Racing League. He apparently enjoyed my antics so much, he asked, hey, do you want to come broadcast our Sprint Car League? Now I'm in shock because, I'm, because once again, this right here, how I'm, I understand, this is a very probably a horrible explanation of how to broadcast because I talk really fast and everything. This is how I commentate very sarcastically. You know, I, I don't change myself. Apparently, people find that hilarious and entertaining. So he wanted us to broadcast for him. I go, uh, uh, uh. I mean, sure, why not? But I force Andrew to tag along because I'll be damned if I'm doing this by myself. So I kidnap Beach and force him to come along. And then things happen, and then Kings of Sling, right here, they want us to come broadcast for them. Then that goes into Sidewinder, and you know, where we are today. So yeah, I, I don't I don't have a good answer or, or saying how to actually ask for people to take a chance on you because I didn't really do that. I kind of did the meme route. I figured, hey, how are going to this be? People found it entertaining for some odd reason, and here I am. So I'm, I'm probably not the person to go to for asking. I'll get a broadcasting, but this, this, this is how you do it. But this leads into my final point here. Don't change yourself, like your personality, when you broadcast. A lot of companies or people that broadcast, they, they, they go about it too almost, I'm not sure... The best way to say it, they have they, they have a. It seems like a lot of people when they broadcast, they have a stick shoved so far up their ass. Jeff Dunham would have a new puppet. Like uh, when people, you know, Andrew and Bo and I, when we see someone go three wide, we will go, "Oh, they're three wide coming through turns three and four. Are they gonna be able to hold on to it?" You know, but a lot of people, they they will literally go, "And they are three wide heading into turn one." You know, with no emotion, it's like give it, give it some some energy. If if I see a horrible wreck, which <laughs> one of the things when we first did Kings of Sling, dude goes flying through the air, and I I, I go, oh my god, he flew through the air, he's dead. Two now, here comes the twenty three and the eighty. Ballon d'Or, oh the twenty three, oh my god, lord! <laughs> I, almost every wreck.
quarterback with a heart impact at all, I will literally say, someone get an ambulance, make sure this man is okay. And people in the chat, they will be go, hey, dumbass, it's a video game. Yes, it's a video game. It's a sim. But you don't have to make it so bland. So if if you want to go in, you know, have some energy. Don't don't bore people to death. And I guess that's why the audience we have sticks with us because we try to be energetic about it. But if there's anything to take away from it, just be yourself. Don't change your personality. But yeah, that I think that's about all I got. I'm sure I forgot some things. If, leave. I guess if you have any questions, leave. Leave them in the comments or so. I will try to give an answer if there's something. There's, like, once again, like SDK and ATVO, I'm not going to have really any answers to that. And once again, like I said, this right here. Oh, one thing I want to mention here. Make sure you lock everything down so you don't accidentally move it. For example, uh, let's see. This right here. No, see, that's unlocked. Let's say you click around or whatever. You accidentally click this. Boop, it's gone. It's over here now. You're like, oh. So you have to move that back over here, and then make sure make sure you lock it. See how it's locked now. You can't you can't move it. But yeah, and that right there that just shows this is completely unscripted. I can't follow a script to save my life. I've never been able to. But yeah, that will pretty much kind of do it from this. If you have any questions, I will do my best to try and answer in the comments. Once again, I am not a good person to try and make a video like this, but I don't think there's many out there of people actually trying to tell you how to get into broadcasting. But, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all found some use in this. Uh, and if you do go into this, good good luck. This is definitely, this, this is a hobby that will require some effort. And it can be stressful, but it, it's, I enjoy doing it. It's a nice way to make a little bit of money. But, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed. See you all later.